Hello, my name is Prathi, and I am a staff worker with FES Singapore. I am deeply fond of and fascinated by amphibians and reptiles, an interest that grew when I read life sciences in the university more than 10 years ago. Though these days, my curiosities have developed in the worlds of biblical hermeneutics and Old Testament studies. And I am delighted that whether it is frogs or snakes or what is the meaning of the biblical text, I have found a ready partner in my husband, Isaac. Bonsoir. My name is Timothée. I was staff with French-speaking GBU Switzerland and part of the IFES Logos and Cosmos team. I'm married to one wife, Natasha, and father of one daughter, Agathe. But I'm lover of many books. I like cars and donkeys. Come to me for chocolate. I studied history and literature as well as theology. I too am a great lover of chocolate and many books, some of which I could go on about for hours if there are any Lord of the Rings fans here. But let's start our conversation today by inviting audience participation. When we say university, or higher education, what is a phrase in a few words that comes to mind? We'll be having a slido up on the screen. So please tell us. And it's the first hundred to make it on. So fastest fingers first. Oh, I already, this is clearly a Singaporean. <laughs> A possibility to engage in higher thinking abilities. Privilege, fun. Elitism, autodiscipline, autodiscipline. Research. What's next? Is that working in a farm? Specialized training, complexity, expensive idealism, status, place of higher learning, emancipation, a way to get a better life. Lone leader, critical thinking. There's a lot more than just a university, indeed. Leadership, curiosity, change, adulting, study, wiser, questioning everything. Sopan santum, indeed. Skepticism, formation, titles, debt. Yes, very real. Singleness, how unfortunate. Better opportunities, pacantas. Pacantas is what you think, okay? Supper and studying to death. Teach a person to become human. But not, indeed, very tiring. Questions and no answers. No sleep. Growing, parent pressure. I'm sorry, I can't read that. Agent of change, change, nightmare. Studying on the roof. Permanent head damage. Timothy has that. Development, career, smart, seeded for society. Wow, it's really going on. Discipline, terrible food. How unfortunate. <laughs> Different kinds of thoughts. Word, more independent learning. Stress, anxiety, knowledge and skills and a degree. Future, brilliant, wise and, and, to, be, and to have endeavors, I guess. Questioning. System, kabut samalam. Pay more, think more, stress more. Instant noodles, the staple of every student. No sleep. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello, back to you too. <laughs> Opportunities to share about Christ, knowing God more, freedom. Hello again. Energon, research, fellowship, impacting friends, formation. Timothy is what you think about? Wow, all right. <laughs> A diverse school of thought, Mahjong. Students today, leader tomorrow. That sounds like a slogan from government. Learn once, can forever. Extra joss. Places of social economic equality. Going deeper. Openness of mind and knowledge. Goodbye. Timothy still comes up. Mission, overthinking, advanced learning. Unhappy for exams. Seat of learning, let me sleep. Timothy comes again. Bertam one, unity, unity in diversity. Pressure. <laughs> Thanks for spelling my name wrongly. 
Find a spouse. <laughs> Discourse. Dad? Knowledge in the service of others. Timothy again. Activism, formation, leader, money, racism, ambitions, to fall in love, important. Authentic exposure, hard time, more opportunity to make an impact. University, thank you for spelling my name correctly. Prestigious, a lot of people. Ticket for leaving the country, deepness, come on, don't be weird. Sumangat Revisi, working for a piece of paper. Praise the Lord, amen. That's what we heard today. Socialization, GBU, no coffee, that's sad. Bad mark, alone, formation. I could keep going, but Timothy keeps coming up, so maybe you should take over. <laughs> Thank you for the love. <laughs> Timothy is indeed married with one child. I'm not sure why kidney <laughs> stones is coming up. <laughs> what kind of university experience some of you have. I also see finding a spouse is quite a common thread for some of you. Well, this is absolutely great. Is it? We probably should stop this before it becomes weird and be before Matt White says we have run out of time. As I feast national movements, no, yes. I think you should go to the Thank next you. slide. <laughs> We've seen from the videos and now from those reactions how diverse the context in which we are serving and living are. A tremendous variety. But essentially, we are people who spend time engaging with many aspects of God's creation, either past, present, or future. And also with God's creatures, their behavior, their passions and drives, their actions, their failures, their development, even their disappearing. So we could say that the university which we take here as a very short shortcut for all institutions of higher learning, being vocational colleges, technical colleges, whatever, are at the core a safe space. Nothing of what is being taught at university is outside of God's sphere of sovereignty and knowledge. There can be dimensions of it which we find unsettling, Opinions which challenge the way we see the world or how we have understood God's re revelation about the world. But the university cannot be close to God because God is at work in the whole world, including where people don't acknowledge that what they are studying is God's creation and God's creatures. Though the eyes of sinful men thy glory may not see, we just sung. So how does this incredibly fascinating world of higher education look like? If we want to be good missionaries, faithful witnesses, where God has placed us as students, as staff, or boards to support this testimony, it is absolutely crucial that we examine our context as well as possible and to keep asking questions, good questions, about it. So Pranati, if we want to set the scene, what would you say is going on in higher education today? One of the key things that has been happening in the higher education space is the move towards interdisciplinary learning. So, for example, one of the local universities in Singapore recently merged its arts and sciences departments to become the College of Humanities and Sciences. What I've also observed on the ground, and what is also undoubtedly emerging, is the rising number of students who are double majors or double degrees, even triple majors, apparently. There's also a strong push towards future readiness. There's a growing sense that we are in the fourth industrial revolution, which means the need to be agile in the ways that administrations prepare their future workforce. 
how students think, what skills they have, and so on. No longer is it really about how much information you know or that you can regurgitate. And all the more in this age of AI, the focus is less on getting answers. Rather, it is about shaping students to ask questions and to discern and critically evaluate from the plethora of answers that they have. Then, to contextualize, and to contextualize in collaboration. We have been moving towards problem-based pedagogies for a while now. This is part of the overall shift towards customized and personalized learning within tertiary education. Significant in this push towards future readiness is continuous lifelong learning. That involves upskilling and reskilling. You would hear it said that our times are volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. One needs to continuously acquire new skills in order to stay relevant. In considering the future of student ministry within this era, I read some local National Institute of Education and Ministry of Education plans. What were the policymakers and educators who educate educators say? Singapore talks about assessments that measure the ability to collaborate, creatively problem solve, and even measures for flexibility and resilience. Yes, resilience has become quite the key value given this rapidly changing world. So not just a World Assembly slogan. Not just a slogan. I wonder if these things are familiar to you. What do your institutes discuss regarding the future of learning? Just a couple more things, but also linked to future readiness and pedagogies is the rise in experiential learning. There's more practical, hands-on experiences within the classroom, connecting theory to practice. Many of our students are voluntarily or are forced to go for internships any kind of internships. There's a lot more industry attachments and research project opportunities. Most speak of needing or seeking real life or work experience while still in school. Of course, a few of our students just need to work in order to make ends meet. But this means that many of our students are never free during term breaks or summer holidays. Some even juggle internships while taking classes. Though, this means that there are greater opportunities for theologizing about work while still in school. I think I've also heard more and more stories from students who choose to take a leave of absence for a semester, for a year, for a period of time, in order to pursue job stints or entrepreneurial activities. Do any of these sound familiar to you? Yes, they do. And, and I think many of these issues you mentioned, Prati, are present in, in many countries, but sometimes they also take different focus. In Niamey, Niger, for example, when I was visiting a campus, I was told that some students enroll in university just to have access to the campus, and find new business opportunities, like for guys providing transportation, taxi or motorbikes, or cell phone services, and for female students, cooking for the others. These people are part of the campus, yet they don't really have an intellectual engagement with the content of the lectures which they, in most cases, don't attend. And of course, there is, um, th there is also the problem of um, of students going on strike simply because they haven't received the government scholarship they depend on for sheer survival. Or many lectures not even taking place because the lecturers go on strike because they haven't been paid. Or even much worse. Many students told me that the number one issue on their campus were sexually transmissible grades. You've heard me correctly. You can't graduate 
or even get a good grade if you don't sleep with the prof or the teaching assistant. Engaging this kind of university context is very challenging and comes extremely close to the student's skin. And of course, there is the question of motivation. When I ask students, why did you choose this academic discipline? What makes you passionate about it? Many tell me, don't quite know, or sounded interesting, or my parents wanted me to do it, or I think they are good job prospects. Sometimes those students say, oh, I had a senior high school teacher who was so passionate, wanted me to know more. Some of what you've shared is really quite horrific. And other parts do find resonance with my own context as well. Of course, another very obvious trend, which was present at our last World Assembly, but is even more so now, is the rise in online education. There are many online learning platforms, with institutions expanding their online programs. Many of us have more opportunities to access high-quality education. Micro-learning, narrow-learning units, is becoming a big thing. Online learning does facilitate greater collaboration in research and teaching across borders and time zones like never before. True, but as you also know, there are downsides. We know about the loneliness issues. Some of you mentioned it in the Slido. The mental health challenges. Auto discipline, wrote someone. Even more pragmatically, many countries still have massive issues with internet access. In the Logos and Cosmos initiative, we realized that in some contexts, accessing a Zoom call for the whole duration is very challenging. We are not equal in the academic world. Even rich countries like Switzerland or the US have now stopped subscribing to academic journals because they are simply too expensive. Isn't it? highly unjust that research, mostly funded on taxpayers' money, ends up in highly privatized journals with very high margins of profit, and thereby making this research not available to anyone. This means research is not available as it should be. If you are born in a rich country like I am, which has well-equipped libraries and laboratories, the chances that your research is better are very high. This is why we also see uh, the growing development of informal accessing of academic publications, like maybe AI boats, I will not call names now, which having more or less legally crushed paywalls will deliver to you the PDF you need for your next term paper into your phone within seconds. Maybe within IFES we could also help each other access the resources that we need to write better papers, provide, produce better research. And along with what you mentioned earlier, Prathi, there is the rise of AI in all domains of education, whether in writing papers, summarizing research, translating articles and PowerPoints, helping you code a future software, translating a World Assembly talk. The academic world is changing very rapidly. The students we are working with as IFES staff are essentially all in another world than the one in which we staff studied. Students in the room, please help us stay relevant and up to date. Please do. I'm not sure this can be stressed strongly enough. As staff members, as boards, we are obliged to think and rethink what it means for our students to be studying today in any given institution of higher learning. Let us ask them as many questions about their studies as possible. We will learn a lot about from them, which in turn should help us love and support them better in their studies and in their witness to God. What you've said makes me think that where we are now feels really precarious. Yet, it holds 
so much potential. Yes, it holds potential in students concern about their homework, their future job prospects, the next exam. What does it mean to be a honest Christian and, for example, not to plagiarize, to cheat or bribe professors? Or perhaps even university employees of all levels. Will they keep their jobs? Or will they be replaced by cheaper labor, maybe even robots? That no longer feels like a distant reality. Not distant at all. And I think of some politicians wondering about these students and their research. Maybe you. How will this research or the behavior of those unruly students challenge them, especially if they are corrupt? And we shouldn't forget how these developments can unsettle the staff and boards of IFES movements. How can we cope with the pace of change, still advise our students well, accompany them as they mature and try to navigate all the many challenges of academic life, whilst at the same time being faithful witnesses to the one whom they might confess as Lord while not really knowing what it means. Yes, and now we want to pause our speaking for a while. We heard it said yesterday that we should be asking each other deeper questions. So now's a good time to turn to your neighbor once more to share some of your thoughts. What questions would you formulate for your context? And has our conversation thus far resonated with you? The great news is there are many more delicious meals to share with others. So it's one thing to talk about what is going on, but the question will be quite soon, what will be the implications for our mission and practice on campus? I think there are many students in the room, right? So what are the implications of what we have talked about for our understanding and practice of mission on campus. I think that at the very least, we need to be aware of the trends that are happening as best we can. Then, initiate conversations in our fellowships. How can we adapt? How can we learn to be conversant with some of these shifts? There is this great quote from Vinath Ramachandra on an incarnational engagement with the university that I often think about when we speak of doing mission. He says, we don't just drop in from the outside to conduct so-called missions on the campus. And to paraphrase the rest of his quote, which is on the slide, we need to be attentive to the campus's changing culture its ethos, its worldview, its ideologies and lifestyles and priorities. And I think Wesley's story gave us a good glimpse into that. So one of our campus ministries in Singapore recently held an engagement activity. They opened a booth and they invited students to come, rank and speak of their priorities in life. And to build on that, sometimes I wonder if we risk approaching the university in a utilitarian way. We think that as IFES, we are essentially people called to take part in God's mission wherever we are, which is true. And we just happen to be at university, as if the context didn't matter. And we could go there, preach our message, irrespective of who is there and what the university ethics and culture are, just assuming we know the questions that people are asking. Can we make sure we respect and genuinely love the context as we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves? Truly, and part of respecting the context means knowing and thus asking more questions. So, for example, the push to interdisciplinary learning suggests a greater emphasis on dialogue and collaboration. How can we learn to converse critically, but compassionately, 
within a space and with a people who hold diverse perspectives. Or in recognizing that we are moving towards contextualized problem-based pedagogies and experiential learning, how can our IFS group address real world concerns? How can our Bible studies move from personal pietistic takeaways, like a small moral lesson, to equipping our students in witnessing to society and campus and wider conversations? Can we make sure to ask questions about how this and that biblical text that we are studying relates to the campus? And by the way, you've received the hot of the press brochure which will truly help you do that. It's called Exploring the World and the Word, a collaboration project between the Engaging University team and the Scripture Engagement team. Make sure you make the best of it. Thanks, Timothy, for that excellent advertising. You clearly have a future here. <laughs> I found that a theology of shalom is helpful in framing my thought, considerations, and action on missional campus engagement. When I say shalom, I mean wholeness and flourishing in right relationships within and across all facets, with God, with humanity, with the rest of the created order, and even with myself. We just heard about flourishing this morning. I think that shalom invites us to keep in view the campus and seek its well-being. A local IFS group is not a ministry for Christians on campus who happen to attend it but a ministry by Christians in and for the campus. And to build on that, if we agree that shalom is God's purpose for his creation, a creation which he continues to love and to redeem as we speak, then what we learn at university can be a place to learn how to serve God better. Where God can be said to be holy, holy, holy as we just sung. To quote from an excellent book on higher education theology by Mike Higton, university life can probably be a life of service to the peaceable kingdom, the kingdom of love and justice. This learning is not perfect. We all know how much sin there is on university campuses. But we must value it because learning is the student's first and priority calling. We need to be learning both from the uni, but also from each other. Learning happens in the encounter. And if we are serious about the university, which we claim to respect as university ministry, we should also be learners with respect to theology. How does academic research and life shed a light on how we see God? I hope and pray that meeting Christians from other parts of the world, as we will all do here, will enlarge our views, deepen our appreciation for the fact that the gospel is not limited to the very narrow blindfolds of my context of origin. It is a message owned by other human beings, equally loved by God and equally legitimate to relate to him and share about this relationship with others including sometimes on other premises and with different priorities than those most natural to me. So I cannot decide for you what the priorities of your witness are. You've spoken so passionately about this. But what do you think is an orientation or an attitude or a mindset that would help us as we missionally engage the university? The university is at its core a safe space. The first thing is to real, realize that the university can, can be seen as a gift from God and from the world. And sometimes there is some job to be done to reach even that conclusion. Despite the many challenges, it is a place where we have at least two opportunities. Firstly, to learn about God's creation how we created nature, the environment, from the nanomolecules to the gigantic Peruvian whale which, of which Nature magazine reported yesterday, to the big galaxies. 
This should make us humble and worship God, but also want to preserve it and make us deeply angry at whatever is despising it. And secondly, learn about God's creatures, our neighbors in biblical language. The fantastic animal and human diversity, the intricacies of the human and the animal psyche, who knows even of the reptiles, what drives creatures, what their external and internal challenges are, what devices or ideas they have invented to face them, where their God-given, yet often wrongly used, gifts. This means we'll also sometimes learn things about organizations, matters, ideas that we find deeply uncomfortable, as I know all too well as historian. But we worship a God who loves the truth. The truth will set us free. We shouldn't be afraid of the truth wherever we find it and in whichever academic discipline this appears. This is our primary calling at university. Learning. Expand and or change our views. Abandon some ignorance and biases, especially the cultural biases that make us think we know it all. Remember John 1, Nathaniel. What good can come from Nazareth? He had to change his paradigm. We are not to presuppose that we know it all. And this is the fundamentally Christian attitude of love, of which Paul speaks in Philippians. In humility, value others above yourself. So I could summarize what you've said in this way. We learn that others have thought differently than we do. That our priorities are but a possibility amongst others. And we cannot presume that everybody sees things the way that we do. I think this is crucial to our mission. At university, we learned that God's creation and God's creatures are much more diverse and much more interesting than our little corner of the universe and the very few books we've read. Very few books, indeed. But to return to what you first mentioned, I think it's interesting to say that the university is at its core a safe space. I need to think about that a little more. Though I wholeheartedly love and agree with the orientation to learning within the university with all that entails. To me, that is connected with making room or being hospitable. I think that hospitality is integral in informing our posture in welcoming the peculiar other, even the ideological other. Like disciples on the road to Emmaus, we do not always first know who we break bread with. Though I think that we as IFS need to honestly consider what we mean when we say engage. What does it mean to truly be dialogic? Where ethically and technically speaking, both parties should be shifting in their perception and reception of the truth. Sometimes our engagement efforts may be perceived or maybe even are veneers for imposing proselytization. We can be accused of not being truly interested in listening or learning, but in speaking. And with all that we have talked about today, a little ironic, I know, we must recognize that we are not the only voice on campus. One of the things that I've observed is how cautious school administrations are when the local IFS group wants to organize public square conversations, especially if they are the only society behind it. Or even when an IFS group wants to organize workshops on sticky societal topics. You could say that this is just the school being concerned about backlash and complaints. But part of it is also the message that Christianity cannot presume itself as a dominant voice on a subject, especially when it has not earned that right. And I think that hospitality comes in here again, needing to discern how others receive us and how we might in turn receive others and attend their events as well. 
a little overwhelming was meant to be. Where, if not here, many things we touched upon. What is the one thing you want to read, to discuss, and to pray about with your friends, with your office movements, maybe also in your church? Please, would you take 30 seconds to write these thoughts on your handbook or note-taking app? And do come and share them with us at the Engaging University booth at the IFES Expo, which will start tomorrow. We'd like to hear your thoughts and maybe your questions as well. Please just write a few things down. You will read, please do read. You will discuss, please do talk. And you will pray, please do pray about. I think we were told for the past three minutes that we have one minute left. So... Thank you for your time. I know Timothy and I couldn't cover all the facets and all the important points about engaging the university, but this is only our second evening, and so we have much more time, and we have many more opportunities ahead of us, and maybe this can be your conversation starter. Rather than favorite food or how you got here, ask, what is the university situation like in your context? Thank you. <laughs>